Good evening, everybody. <laughs> evening, Steelers. Oh, there's already a few people in here. Can you hear me loud and clear? Evening, folks. Evening to you, Nick. Evening to you, Steve. Even Ivan. Oh, dear. I'll be watching me. And evening beyond. Uh, good to see you all here. 15 of you. Uh, as you can see tonight, I'm trying something new. Uh, tonight is we are playing uh, Five Men in Normandy by Ivan, who is watching proceedings as, as we speak in the background there. Uh, I thought yesterday uh, my mates came over and we had a face-to-face -face game of Arkham. Uh, good evening, Ivan. Uh, a face-to-face -face game of Arkham Horror. And uh, I did suggest to them about streaming it, but um, one of them, Steve, he wasn't too bothered about uh, appearing on camera. So we decided not to in the end. But it gave me an idea because I'd already set up this board, you can see here, as... Um, for my nine men uh, five men in normandy i was going to do a video on it anyway uh so i thought well let's have a go at least streaming it live and just playing it through and just seeing how it turns out as a live game and it might be something that i might return to in the future the good thing about this is uh the board is pretty small it's only a three foot by four foot board so it fits pretty easily onto the camera as you can see here i've pretty much got everything on you can see the back back of the table the front of the table so uh i don't know how it would work with a six foot by four foot board for a bigger game but it might do it might do uh maybe for smaller stuff like this and gas lands and things we can uh, play some more live stuff uh evening terry good to have you here uh really uh, this is like just a tester so we'll see how it goes uh, I don't expect it taking very long, to be honest. I had a very quick game of it earlier on just to test it out uh, yesterday evening, and it didn't last very long. But I'm going to I'm going to go through it and, and let's you know let's work our way through it together. And Ivan can uh, can adjudicate on the rules. <laughs> uh, I think I've got most of it. It's a pretty simple game. I just want to show you that uh, I got I got it off the War Games website. Uh, even again, Bjorn, uh, this is my copy of it here. What I did was uh, I basically bought it off uh, the War Games Vault. Uh, evening, Kevin. <laughs> Your shout. <laughs> good, good. Uh, all ready for war, yes, absolutely. Evening, uh, friends of General Hay. Good evening to you. Uh, so this is my copy of it. So I got it on the War Games, webs uh, the War Games Vault. Uh, I think I paid $11 for it, which is the recommended price. And then I just got it printed out as an A5 booklet because, you know, you don't really need it to be much more than that. Uh, and that was dead cheap as well. It's a, what, 80-page book, uh, and it's absolutely full of uh, everything you need to play the game, basically, as soon as you hit the ground. A uh, very simple game as well uh, by all accounts. But we'll see how that goes. I mean, no. Uh, I like I like simple games because uh, I'm, I'm quite simple myself, so it helps. Uh, it's basically uh, a, a pretty simple I go you go game, but there's a couple of little nuances in it that just make make it slightly different to your typical I go you go kind of thing. Uh, evening, Nick, with your beer, good stuff. I think I might need one myself up here. Uh, I'm up in the loft and it's boiling hot today. So what I've done is I've set up the table. Uh, one of the things that you do is you roll for the figures that you get in it. And I've got the Germans versus the British. The British are attacking into this small French hamlet sometime during the Norman camp campaign. It is June. So, of course, uh, it is, uh, you know, it's, it's Normandy Day coming up, D-Day coming up. Uh, Ivan says it's worth noting it's intended to be run as a campaign. Be absolutely play single games as well yeah exactly i mean a lot of most of the the rules are about the campaign itself and, and setting up new uh, uh new scenarios and things and i think uh, am i right ivan this was the your first game the first game that you produced or uh put out there under the uh nordic weasel uh names and if so when was the year that you actually did it so that was another question because i couldn't find a year in the in the book itself but yeah, it's, it's, uh, I'm just doing this as a as a single single game, really, just to show you how it works, and really for me to learn how it works as well. First commercial, yeah, yeah, that was Naughty Weasel, yeah. Uh, but what year was it though? That's the other question. Can you even remember? So you roll up your forces, uh, and you basically you roll five times on the force creation charts, 
there are a lot of charts in it, but most of those are played outside of the game itself. So there's no real charts within the game. It's uh, when you're creating the campaign itself is, is a lot of chart rolling, which is quite interesting. Uh, so it doesn't bog the actual game down itself. It's the stuff outside of it. Uh, and I rolled for these and I got the Germans came out with six men. Uh, all of them, all five of them at least, armed with MP40s, apart from one chap. Uh, uh, it's been, what, six, six years? Maybe? Okay. Uh, so I've, uh, they've got six Germans armed with MP40s, apart from one who's armed with a sniper rifle. Uh, the British ended up with eight men, uh, one of which is armed with a pistol. You've also got, uh, let's have a look, one, two four rifles and three smgs so june the 15th 2014 okay well that's a, it's almost it's uh it's anniversary then we're just coming up on <laughs> two weeks off if i'd have known i would have done this on the anniversary um so you the the idea of the game is it's more about like a, a hollywood action than a specific set uh first world war uh Second World War, sorry, um, sets group of, of men. They're kind of a bunch of guys that have drifted together during the campaign. They've probably picked up different weapons here, there, and everywhere. Even in Paul could see here. Uh, there's 26 people watching this, and I've only got seven likes. Come on, get those likes up. Mash that like button. If you're enjoying it, of course. If you're not, then don't. Uh, so it's, like, it's really like a group of, of, uh, uh, of soldiers have kind of drifted together, you know, the kind of thing you see in Hollywood films. Uh, and that's kind of how the, the action feels as well when you're playing it. Because of the way the, the mechanics work, you hone in on particular areas on the board as the game plays. Uh, so basically, the I said it's an I go, you go, but you only activate uh, half of the, your soldiers on the table at any one time. So uh, unless you roll the dice and something else happens, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll tell you all about that. When you got up to 15, thank you very much. Cheers, my daddy. Um, we so uh, I'll talk about the the special rules and things, special roles. Uh, but generally, in a, if it's a normal turn, you activate half rounded up of your figures. So in this case, the British will be activating four at least until they lose any, and the Germans will be activating three uh, until again until they lose any. I don't know if you can see them, uh, but I've got the British set, uh, split into two four man units, fire teams. There's four of them here. There's four of them here. The Germans, I've got them guarding a little ammo dump on the other side of this bridge. So there's two of them down there. We've got our sniper sitting in the woods just on the end here. And then they've also got uh, one chap here, one here on this road, and then another one in the gardens here as well. So they, they're kind of covering all the approaches as you would kind of want to expect them to do, really. <clears throat> so that's basically it. That's uh, it's, it's whatever figures you've got. It's whatever uh, you know, whatever terrain and things you've got. You can throw together. You can play it on a on a board as small as two foot by two foot. So it's it's a perfect thing for fitting on a, a dining table, or you know, even as a, a club night kind of game, that kind of thing. So I'm going to start with the British. They're going first, and the way you start is you basically just roll a single d6, and this tells you what kind of uh, turn it is. So we're rolling that. I've got a three. Now, if you roll a one, you get a scurry turn, which means you all your men can move, uh, but they can't fire, and there's no reaction fire to them. Uh, if you roll th uh, two to five, which I have done, it's a standard turn, and that's half of the figures can activate. Uh, I've been saying that the original play tests were on two foot by two foot table using 170 seconds pigs. Yeah, I can see it working very well on that. And then a six is a firefight, which means all of your men can fire at anything they can see. So we roll a three, so it's a normal turn. And uh, the British are going to activate half of their number. So I'm going to activate these four over here. Now, the one thing <laughs> that struck me straight away, because I've been playing a lot of Lardy rules, uh, it's six-inch movements. Now, I would prefer to do it in D6 movements. But I'm going to keep to uh, the original rules as written, just because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm playing it for, well, the second time now. So I'm just kind of going through it. But if I was to make any changes to it, I think that's all I'd do is I'd change the, the movement to a D6 roll instead of a, uh, a, 
a fixed six inch. Nick, uh, that's pretty accessible. What scale are you using, mate? I am using 15 mil. Uh, and as I said, this is on a three foot by four foot board. You could make this a lot smaller. Uh, as Ivan says, two foot by two foot, uh, dead easy. You probably could use D6 plus two for movement and do pretty well. Yeah, that's what I thought uh, myself, Ivan, just, just to make it less uh, between one and six, at least if you're moving three inches. I thought that might just be a bit of an idea. That's just because I don't like fixed movements anymore. That's the problem. <laughs> so I'm counting the hedges and the fences all as minor obstacles. So they work. You basically move up to them. You stop at them. But then the next turn, you can move over them. If there were major obstacles, you would move up to them. You would spend a turn to moving over them. And then you would move again. So these are a bit quicker to move over. You can scurry as well or um, dash at the end of your turn. Uh, if you don't fire. So I'm just going to move these up to the fence. But I'm not going to allow these two because they've only just got to the fence. Uh, I don't know if you, if uh, if Ivan the Adjudicator could tell us if you can dash after they've uh, reached a fence or not. Uh, but I'm going to say no in this case. Uh, if he says yes, then, you know, we'll, uh, we'll just pretend they're hunkered down behind this. Uh, the interesting thing as well with the game is, is cover. Uh, and Ivan told me to read up on this uh, uh, earlier on, so I did. Uh, if you are up against cover, you can fire over it. Uh, if you are if you are away from cover and your target is also away from cover, then you only fire with what are called the shock dice. Uh, obstacle stop the move. There you go. Yeah, they they could dash next turn once they're over the obstacle. Um, so you can only fire over it. But you only fire with shock. So you're only taking a few shots at people. Uh, in the distance otherwise you can peek your head above the uh the show i'm just opening the window just to let you get a bit of air in here uh you can peek over but then obviously the enemy can also shoot at you as well but if when the enemy shoots at you you can actually uh, duck down behind that uh, obstacle straight away so unless i say these guys are ducked behind so that's a british turn they've literally just moved up to the uh, the fences here so we go to the Germans. Uh, is shock like suppressing fire? Yeah, pretty much. When you fire, I'll tell you this now, but you'll see it later on. You roll two dice. You roll a kill. For most weapons, you roll a kill dice and a shock dice. They change in indifferences. Uh, the kill dice, as it says on the tin, are more likely to kill you. The shock dice uh, is more likely to suppress you or make you run away. It depends on what you roll. Basically, you're looking for sixes and ones on both of those dice. That's incredibly simple. Uh, so it's obviously the Germans. So they roll their dice. They've got a five, so it's a normal turn for them. And they're in a reasonably good position because they're already in cover and waiting. So I'm going to sit there and just I'm going to I'm going to keep them where they are at the moment. Uh, fences. I'm going to say you can see over all the fences. Uh, but if they're behind the hedge and a fence, then you can't see over it. You have to be on the other side to be able to see. So there's no British in line of sight from those Germans on the edge. And they've only got a 12-inch range anyway with that uh, submachine gun. So only really to the end of those fences for both of those and the guy in the, in the village itself. So they're, they're too far away anyway. Uh <laughs> You didn't realize your YouTube set to 480 resolution. <laughs> no, no. Well, I, I hope it's, it's not so grainy. Again, it's 25 people watching. Come on, 16 likes. Get it up. Hit that like button. Right, so we're running back straight over onto the British. So we'll roll again for their turn start. Six. So six is a firefight. This means that everybody can fire at somebody that they can see. Now, unfortunately, the British... As I just said, the fences and the hedges are blocking line of sight. They can't actually fire at anybody. So it goes straight over to the Germans' turn instead. They kind of lose a turn. That would have been a better role for them if they'd come up earlier on. So the Germans have got a four. Uh, they're not going to do much because, <laughs> again, they're still in that good position. Why would they, why would they move at this point? Uh, they're just going to sit there. So we're going back to the British. <laughs> <laughs> and it's firefight. Uh, so they're doing nothing. So back to the Germans. Uh, they are on a two. 
So yet again, they are just going to sit there. They're, they're waiting this on out. <laughs> uh, Treaters of Scurry. Ah, yes, yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, well, we've gone past it now anyway, I haven't, so I'll, uh, I'll come back to that at some point. Uh, so instead, so yeah, the, the, you either firefight or you scurry, and uh, I, I, I forgot the rules where you, uh, where you can move. So we'll go back to the British. A six is the firefight, so they are going to scurry. So a scurry is basically you can move uh, and you don't get any reaction fire against it. So it's good for uh, it's good for, for running across roads and things where uh, where you're in the line of sight of the enemy or just to run you know into cover, that kind of thing. So it's good for the British at this point because they can now get moving forward. So these chaps are going to move into the fields. As I say, at this point, line of sight is still blocked against those Germans because this is their high wheat fields and we've got this group as well they are also moving up right so back to the Germans Let's see what they do a two it's a normal move uh, they're unable to really do a great deal at this point uh, I think what I might do actually is move this sniper just along the edge of the the wood uh, the wood is delineated by the uh, the MDF boards that you can see there so I'm going to get him into some kind of position so at least he can see and shoot so that's all the Germans are doing back to the British so it's a five so it's a normal move so only half of their men can move and I don't like these ones being out in the open so these guys are going to come up against this hedge fence line here. That German at the end has got his head down. So they can't actually see him at the moment. I'm going to put them there. Just uh, so if he pops his head up to fire, then his head will be up. When they fire at him, he can then put his head down if he wants. Uh, so, But that will be in his move. So that's a British turnover. So let's have a look at the Germans, see what they do. A six. So it's a firefight, so all the Germans can fire. Right, well, we've got this SMG guy, and they're just within range. So he is now going to fire. So we've got this chap here firing. I'm just going to fire at the closest British over here. So there's a wind blowing out there now. So I'm going to uh, pull that window shut a bit of air so we've got the german firing and an smg when it's aimed fire it will fire up to uh, 12 inches it rolls one kill uh, dice and one shock dice so i'm using the red for the kill dice and a blue for the shock dice now we're looking for ones and sixes on these uh, and i'll tell you what they are if they come up Right, we've got a six on the shock dice. So six on a shock dice is, one moment, uh, retreat six inches, and then he has to cover. So that's a bail. So he has to fall back six inches, uh, and I'm going to put a red marker on him so I remember. So if he falls back over here, and then he is kind of stuck he can recover when it's his turn, if I activate him. Uh, otherwise, he's kind of stuck there, or unless somebody else comes up and, and moves into contact with him. So that's basically how it happens, really. That's pretty simple. <laughs> not going over there, Sarge, absolutely not. <laughs> somebody with a big gun. Uh, so that's basically how you, you do your firing. And depending on what weapon you're using, depends on how many kill dice and how many shock dice you roll. Uh, per turn, so you're just increasing that amount of chance of sixes and ones. Right, so that was our Germans. They were rolling. They did the firefight. Uh, none of the others can fire because they can't see anything at this point. But that also means that this chap is now above the uh, the fence line, so he can be shot at by the British in their turn, and it is their turn. A six, they get a firefight. So they can't move, but they can fire. So we've got 
these three at least are able to fire at that German. Uh, but unfortunately, only one of them is probably going to be able to fire at him because he's not stupid. He's going to put his head down as soon as they've fired. So they're only going to get really one shot off. So the rifle is firing uh, the 2d6, the one kill, one shock dice. That's your standard, your bolt action rifle. So let's have a look uh, again. Six. So that's made that German retreat on the shock dice and a two on the kill dice. So our German guys on the British left flank uh, are suspicious of snipers. Yeah, they are sitting tight. <laughs> Uh, although you're playing solo, is this usually a two-player AVB? Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. I'm just playing it solo because I'm just here on, on my own. Really, that's all it is. Uh, so he's going to fall back six inch into cover. So he'll fall back behind this house. We shall stick a red marker on him so we know that he is currently panicking. And he can't recover until he uh, decides to activate uh yes as ivan says the the campaign is solo there are there are ai rules in the uh in the book as well uh which basically sh show you how the the enemy uh, react to to you as a as a player so you could work through it quite easily uh i suppose with something this small it's quite difficult uh to have a campaign with two players because you're always going to be against uh, a mixed enemy you want the you want a squad that you want to basically build up and, and give skills to and things because that's the other thing they do have uh the, the the characters can have skills and extra weapons i've decided not to give them out in this game just because he's a tester but basically they're just like bonuses like you know certain things don't happen or you can move faster or that kind of thing there's also national characteristics but i'm playing this in an incredibly vanilla uh way of doing it just because it's a learning game and you know i'm playing on my own uh, and there's only me to remember apart from you lot watching the book of course <clears throat> so our german retreated so that's the end of the british turn uh, there's no more firing they can do so it's back to the germans a four it's a normal turn for them so they are going to activate this chap now he rolls his dice uh if he rolls We'll see if I get this right. If he rolls a one, uh, he will remain down and he loses his turn. Uh, if he rolls a six, he runs off, basically. Uh, he bails, so he's out. Uh, but uh, if he rolls anything else, he recovers. So I'm just going to try it, see what we get. A two, so he's actually recovered. So I can take that marker off him which is pretty good. Uh, but that's all the Germans are doing. They're, they're, they're kind of hunkering down at this point. Uh, the sniper is waiting for them to move more into the into the, uh, the gardens here. So let's have a look at what, what we're saying here. The Brits on the left are having tea. Absolutely. Why, why would you move when you've got a brew on? Uh, yeah, it's definitely not important to know to rush into stuff. <laughs> a typical British squaddy. <laughs> Any lull in your bro. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Uh, so that was the German's turn. So we're back to the British. Six, firefight. Or, as Ivan has reminded me, it's a scurry. Now, here's a question for you, Ivan. The chap here who is, who is currently uh, bailed, is he able to activate under the, under a scurry and try to uh, react to that? Bring up the tanks. <laughs> uh, they're on their way. They're on their way. While you while you uh, answer that for me, Ivan, I'm going to bring forward the uh, British into the gardens now, disturbing the geese, and the dogs, and then these ones are going to come across here. They are, I'm saying that they're in rough ground because they're in the cornfield, so they can't they can't dash from there. Uh, go ahead and rally him. Yep, we'll do that. And good to see you, Mike. <laughs> uh, John says, Brits and T, absolutely making right. Well, at least he was when I was in the army. He still is. I think the challenger 
uh, is the only main battle tank that uh, includes a, ki a kettle as part of its, uh, its its build. Right, so he's got a two, so he has recovered, but he can't do anything this turn apart from recover. So we're back over to the Germans. Get their command roll, I suppose. Six, so it's a firefight for the Germans. Uh, there's nothing in line of sight, so they can actually scurry if they want. Uh, so this doesn't take any reaction. So your man is going to come back. He's, he's, uh, he's remembered his, his pledge to the Fuhrer, and he's got back into position over there. Uh, and I am also going to allow the sniper to fire as well in this one. Now that, uh, as he rolls at 207 consecutive six, I know. I, normally, I don't roll this many sixes. <laughs> Indian tanks have a kettle by law. <laughs> yeah, I'm not surprised. <laughs> uh, right, so we've got a sniper rifle. So if he's in line of sight, he rolls two kill dice and one shock dice. And he chooses which of the kill dice he wants to use. So he's firing at this chap on the end. So got the wrong colour dice out. So we've got two red and a blue, the blue being shock. And it's, again, exactly the same. All the results are the same. You're looking for ones and sixes on everything. So we've got a one on the shock and nothing on the kill. So that has forced him to uh, throw back again, I think that is. Let's say, uh, let me just have a look. Uh, roll one kill, one shock. Retreat 1d6 and hunker down in cover. So he's going to fall back and run behind here. So he's out of the way, but he doesn't have to recover from that, I don't think. Now, uh, you're probably thinking, yeah, but what happens if you rolled like two ones, one one on the kill dice and one one on the uh, shock dice? Well, it goes in increments. So a kill, a six on a kill dice is, is taking someone out of action. A one is to knocking them down, so that's wounded. And then a six on the uh, on the blue dice is on the uh, on the shock dice is a bail, and then a one is a what do we call it? It is a, a retreat, a flinch. Sorry, uh, and it goes down in that order. So a six on the kill dice supersedes everything. So that's it's just a kill. If you didn't have that, then the one on the kill dice would supersede. The shock dice, and then obviously down the down the line from there. So it's pretty simple, really. Uh, so yeah, uh, tanks, tanks, tanks. <laughs> uh, yeah, Ivan says the the five minute Kursk is the more advanced version of this, which I'm not yet to to do yet. But I will have um, uh, I will have a look at it and probably buy it at some point once I've played this a few times. I think this was your introductory one, wasn't it, Ivan? Right, so uh, the British have taken a hit, so he's retreated. So that was a German's turn, so we're back onto the Brits. I'll lose my place with all this talking. Let's have a look at two. Also, excess damage results spill out. Oh, yeah, if you roll a pair of ones, the second one gets applied to any ally nearby. That's right. Is it within four inches, I think, isn't it? Uh, so a two. For the Brits, it's just a normal move. And we've got these two guys hiding behind these buildings. So I want to, I think I want to press this section forward or this fire team forward here. As I say, I'm not allowing these to scurry, but they are currently out of line of sight of the Germans, but they're just pressing across that, that field. That's all they're going to do. Uh, four inch, yeah. Uh, interesting mechanics. It's, it is. It's it's nice and easy, uh, very simple to remember. Like I said, this is my second game that I've played, and already it's kind of cemented in my head. Uh, five men, the scale. We can play with more miniatures. Are you platoon scale? Uh, you can do, I think. I don't know how, how big you'd have to go before you break the rules. I don't know. Maybe Ivan can tell you as a designer. So back to the Germans. A one, <laughs> so that's a scurry. Uh, so they can move if they want, and they don't provoke opportunity fire if that's the case. So 
we're going to do some movements i think this guy is going to move jump into the front of the woods and so is his pal because the they can see the british coming but they can't fire uh, so let's jump this guy into the up against his fence as well so he'll be able to fire at those those brits in the in the uh in the field the squad is about the aim five minute curse can go bigger uh, you wanted it specifically about patrol actions yeah this is like it, it's the the level below things like chain of command and, and bolt action really uh a little uh refresher kind of game <laughs> it's an even smaller action so let's see what the british gets two so another normal turn so do we press on you know what i think we're going to do some brawling this is something different so basically you move into contact i don't know if you can see that behind that tree but one of these british guys has moved up to the german they both they both roll a dice whoever gets the highest dice whoever gets the scores the highest uh, wins uh the german is fighting behind cover so i think if it's a draw he wins uh, but they're going to try and take him out uh so i'm going to roll a black one for the germans because they're evil or the nazis are at least and then a red one for the british so we'll see what dice they get uh it's three for the british one for the germans the germans lose a man attacker gets a plus one yes of course yeah yeah well he's gone up to four four against one the germans are lost anyway so he is overpowered and taken off so our first casualty yeah brawling is uh, is pretty quick <laughs> pretty quick indeed uh what are you saying there john about tanks and skirmish games you've not seen that before uh chain of command has tanks in very few of them uh, but he does uh, that count that as a, a skirmish game right so that was the first guy the rest of the british are going to move up to this hedge and then they are going to fire at those germans in the woods so i've got two rifles this guy's only got a pistol so i roll for one pistol he's got he's only got a 12 inch range so they're just out unfortunately so we sent bruiser over to deal with the germans on the uh, by the fence <laughs> uh yes yeah, yes yeah, it's definitely hollywood i mean that, that's the idea behind it it's, it's it's a fun game isn't it so we've got the two rifles firing with their uh kill and shock dice so they got a five and a one on the shock dice is he retreats so he buggers off six inch he's gonna fall back somewhere back there and then the other chap is firing at the other german in the woods two and a two so that's no effect so the british firing has been pretty good so far until then uh, that guy's obviously just dropped his uh dropped his rifle uh heroes of normandy uh yeah i played that on the computer i wasn't really keen on it i thought it's all right it's just a bit difficult the haze weather is for encouraging absolutely uh, could it work? Go on, I'll let Ivan answer that one. And one player being the corporal, the Bren section, the other being the Lance Jack, the rifle team. Yeah, I think that would definitely work. Yeah, yeah, definitely, I think. I mean, Ivan can answer for that one, but uh, it's, it's meant to be a, a, a little fun game, really. You kind of do what you want with it. Uh, so that was the British. They did theirs. They moved all their half. So the Germans, what can they do? A three. Uh, so that's a normal move. So they can activate three chaps. They've already lost one. So they're now down to five men. But you activate half rounded up. So they can activate three. Well, we've got a sniper. He's going to fire. This guy can't do anything because he's hunkering down for the turn he'll be able to recover next turn we've got a machine gunner over here he's going to do something and then we've also got our fella over here as well he's machine gunning as well uh 
I don't believe I stated if these British were popping their heads down. And no, I'm going to say that they weren't. Uh, so uh, they, he, they're going to be able to fire at him. So I'm going to start with them. He's firing, first of all, this British chap. There is two dice. Two and a two, no effect. We then got the sniper, who's got those two dice, two kill dice, and he chooses one. Uh, so they're two threes, and a one is a retreat for that British chap. So he's back behind this. They're taking fire, and they don't like it, and they don't know where it's coming from. So that's why they're hiding behind this building. Uh, so that was them two, and then we've got the machine gunner over there. He's just firing at your closest man here. A uh, one, he retreats as well. So the Germans aren't inflicting kills here, but they are certainly holding this advance up, if nothing else. Right. Uh, Ivan, hog away, please do. Uh, you're the guy that designed this game, you know. Uh, talk, talk, talk away. Don't worry about that. Uh, cheers, John. Thank you. Uh, enjoy. I hope you enjoyed what you've seen. Thanks for watching. Uh, that was our Germans. So we're back to the British. Five. So it's a normal move for them. Uh, unfortunately, now they're a little bit spread out. So I'm not sure what to do with them. I guess we could just. Let's get this section back together, all this team back together at least. Get these up on this fence line. So that's three moves. Three have moved. And then we'll pull in this guy as well. So, you know, he, he moved back, so he can't do anything this turn. He's recovering. So, you know, so is he just remembered. So that's two of them that's moved. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to get these two to... Oh, he can't fire because he's only got pistols. So I'm going to get him to fire over there, first of all. On a two dice. A six is he bails. So he falls back D6 inches. And I don't remember what, what happens with that. Uh, he retreats six inches and then he's got to recover. So he's going to have a red mark on him, just so we remember. He's all the way back here now. He's right on the edge of the board. If he fell back any further, he'd be off and we'll be out of the game. So at least the British guy's done something right. And the other one, I'm going to move him up to this fence line here. Uh, he's got an L SMG. How many more Germans we can fire at? Yes, there's one there. So he's going to fire at him with his SMG. Uh, a one is he falls back. Uh, he's almost on the edge of the table, so he's off. Another German is down. The uh, stiff upper lip is working here. You can fall forward if cover is right ahead. Okay, thank you. On a one, they can retreat to the nearest cover. It doesn't have to be back. Right, okay. That's, that's worth knowing. The German sniper and MG are doing their jobs breaking the British unit cohesion. They certainly are. I think the crowds of Volk's Grenadier don't quite have the heart for it. No, it's, this is probably April 1945. <laughs> They're probably quite close to their, their, their town, their, their home as well. They're just a bit fed up with this. All right. Uh, so that was the British. So they, they did pretty well there. They've got, they've uh, booked one guy out and they've also caused another casualty on the Germans who are now down to one, two, four men. Uh, four, so it's a normal move for the Germans. Uh, so we're going to get our sniper to fire. They're only moving two men this time. I'm going to try to recover the guy in the woods. Let's see what happens. We roll the dice. A one, he retreats, so he bugs out. He's gone. So that's another German off. Poor fella. Yeah. So it's not going well, is it, this? Uh, but we've got this guy with the SMG we said was firing. I can't fire with a sniper. No, uh, I'm going to fire with a sniper instead. The more chance of killing with that. Uh, nobody told us can't sniper this girl. I don't know. 
he's he's probably coming from a uh, from a better unit, being drafted in uh, a six. So he's basically scored a six and a five on his kill dice and a four on his shock dice. So he's going to choose the six, of course. So that's a kill. Uh, first British guy is down and out. He's off. So it's three kills, three German kills to one British guy at the moment. Just reply to that text message. Of course, I always get text while I'm doing live things. It wouldn't be a Storm of Steel live event if there wasn't a text message at least once halfway through it. Right. Uh... <laughs> I think, I think your man has just picked a, a picture out of his girlfriend out of his pocket. This is who I'm going to marry when I get home. Right. So that was the British. The Germans are now down to three men. Uh, six is a firefight, uh, which is pretty good for them because they're, they're pretty much in position. Uh, at this point, your man can fire across the here, and I'm going to allow that sniper to fire across as well because they're getting panned at this point <laughs> uh our kills actually kills in the campaign uh you'll have to ask ivan on that one yes you roll an injury are the germans going to hold the bridge mm, are they i don't think so not with three men they might do kevin you never know it is hollywood x obviously so that's another british uh, that sniper is taking a toll. And then we've also got the SMG. He's firing his kill and shock dice. Uh, a six. He's getting them to bug out again. So uh, this guy is retreating. And then he's going to have to recover. So he's back to here behind the hedge with a red tab as well. Okay. Uh, the Germans who ran off also get a chance and get, get a chance of getting a court martial. <laughs> Good cowards, right? We don't have cowards in the Führer's army. Uh, that was the Germans, so back to the British. A two, it's a normal move. Uh, so we are now down for the British down to six, so there's only three men can move. And this area has almost been cleared out, to be honest, at this point by the German sniper. So, we've got this fella here. He's going to move up to the building, and then he's going to fire down there at that German at the edge of the building. I don't know if you can see him, but he's there. Then I'm going to move this guy up to here. He's hitting that rough ground, and so is that chap as well. So that's the three British that are moving. I'm just going to fire him now. He's using his SMG, firing at him with an aimed shot. Uh, a three and a one on the kill dice. The one on the kill dice is a German is knocked over. So he's basically down until he re can recover. So I'll put that marker there. And that's the British turn. At this point, I think they're pretty much just clearing up the Germans, aren't they? So have a look. The Germans, it's a normal turn. So your man has to recover, I think, from his, uh, from his kill. Uh, I can't remember if he has to roll the dice to, to recover or not. Let me just check that. I guarantee you by the time I've read it, Ivan will have told me anyway. Just have a quick look. Uh, Knockdown. Yeah, it's, uh, to roll for you simply roll the dice again. And if it's a one, he stays down. If it's a six, he's out. Otherwise, he's out. He's up. So we roll again. The German. Six. He's out. So another German is out as well. They are bleeding men. Don't they know the Führer needs them? Uh, so that was the first German, and then they've got one more that they can activate. And there's nobody they can see, I don't think. No, I think that SMG guy can see the chap down by the side of the building. Let's see if he's in range. Yeah, he's in 12 inch, so he's going to fire at that British guy on the edge of the building with his SMG. A six. On the shock dice, so the British chap retreats back and again needs to recover. So I'll put a marker on him so we know. 
So he got in, shot a German, then was shot at himself and ran off. Uh, just want to add, SMG can spray in the uh, three shock dice instead. Yeah, I didn't know about that, but uh, we're just trying to kill here, Ivan. <laughs> if suppression is more important. At this point, I don't think it is. So we've got quite a mix of what's going on here. We've got uh, British guy over here needs to recover. This one over here needs to recover. We've got one bloke here behind the building. We've also got these two as well. They're advancing around this corner. So it's the British turn. A three, it's a normal turn. So I'm going to gather them together, I think. So we've got one. And they've got three men can move. So I'm going to try to recover the two guys that are downed. It's the first one. Uh, five, he's recovered. Sorry, not downed, but they're, they're bailed. And the other one. A four, he is also recovered. So that's all we're doing this turn. And that's them done. So it's back to the Germans. All two of them. So only one of these guys can now operate. So four, it's a normal normal uh, move for the Germans. So your man, I think, is going to come through the gardens. He's going to start hunting. It's about six inches from there to that fence line. Yeah, it is. And he stops anyway at the, at the obstacle. So he's going to come up there and try and bash some, bash some British heads if he can. And back to the British then. Uh, we've got a three, so that's a normal move. Now everybody can move. Well, not everyone, but I mean, you know, half. Everybody is, is back up doing stuff. So let's move him into there. He can join him at the fence lines. So they can now both shoot at that German. So that's two of them. And then we've got one more to move. That's going to be this guy. He's just going to join those there. So I'm going to have fire, have two firing now of that German with a rifle and SMG. So the, the rifle, four and a five, uh, no effect. The SMG, uh, a one on the kill dice, and a three is a knockdown for the German there. So he's down. Now he has to recover, uh, to remember from before. However... If any British uh, infantry touch him or come into contact with him, then he's captured and removed as well. So the British are probably going to want to run for, as far forward as they can to uh, to get him out of the game. It's over to the Germans. A one is a scurry move. So he can try to uh, recover from that. So let's just see. A two... Yes, he has. He's recovered, so he's all right. And the sniper is not scurrying. He's staying where he is. Uh, yeah, uh, f uh, reaction fire. I had I had remembered about it, but I'm uh, I'm doing things as vanilla as possible at this point. I uh, I've got a lot of things on my mind, <laughs> so remembering who's fired and who hasn't fired uh, is a bit difficult. But yes, that German. Could have fired as he, these guys moved into into view. So could the sniper, really. But I'm going to let them get away with it because I haven't been doing it so far. Uh, cause that was the that was the German's turn, wasn't it? Because he recovered. And that's all he could do. So it's the British. And they are on a scurry move. So that means everybody can move. So that's very useful for them at this point because that's what they want. They want to get in behind this fella. So those four have come around there. And these ones are going to hop this fence and they're going to go through that gap there past the geese. And to there, into the open, but at least they're both able to fire at the German next turn. If they survive, uh, yeah, the means of criticism. <laughs> I just mentioned it. Yes, I, I did remember it, but uh, I've just forgotten it for this game. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, so back to the Germans. Uh, so it's a three. So that's a uh, just a normal shot. 
uh, a normal move. So the German behind the fence is going to fire at the chaps coming at him. Uh, we've got a one on the shock dice, so that throws one of them back. So I'm going to go with this guy being the closest. He just flinches and runs back to there. I have to spend a turn recovering. So that's all Germans can do because there's only two of them left. By the Brits. Oops, sorry. I'm rolling two dice. Roll one dice, a five. So half of them can move or fire. So that's three of them. So we'll get this guy in the garden to fire at the German behind the fence. I'm also forgetting about some ducking out of sight as well. But... Right, so the three and the four is nothing. And let's move some of these forward. Let's get these up on the bridge. There's one and then two. And then they are going to fire at your man in the woods. So two rifles cracking at him. Uh, a one and a six. So one is on the kill roll. The six is on the uh, shock roll. So he is down. So he's wounded with the first shot. Then the second shot is a six is a kill on the kill roll. So that's taken our sniper out finally. And now there is only one German left. Uh, let's roll for the Germans and see what they do. Five. He's on his own. Uh, geese have been remarkably calm about the shooting going around. Them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're tame. Ten geese. <laughs> yeah, hit twice. Fritz is a definite bleeder. He's bled out. Uh, a German. What is he going to do? I think he's basically got one turn left, hasn't he? He's going to fire at the British guy in front of him, just at least try and cause one more casualty. Uh, a two and a four, no effect, unfortunately for him. So the Brits, a one, so they've got a scurry roll. Now, they can't run into, uh, what's he, into close combat on the scurry. So they can, can only move up, really. So I'm just going to bring these up. And I don't know about anybody watching, but I think if I was that German, I think my hands would be up in the air. That MP40 would be on the floor at this point with two soldiers in front of him, two soldiers behind him. Uh, I think, you know, at this point, uh, he's he, he's going he's gonna to throw in the towel, the turn of the towel. Uh, the last German is trying to remember the British word for Camerad. Absolutely. No, not Fritz. Yeah, Fritz took... <laughs> uh, we're all frightened by the geese. Absolutely. So, yeah, I think I'm going to leave it there. I think that is game over. And that has just taken an hour, just less than an hour. Uh, and we've got a result, a pretty good result out of that. Uh, we Casualty-wise, four Germans, three British. So... If this was a campaign game, then the British would, as Ivan said earlier, would uh, they would roll for what their injuries are going into the next game, and they would uh, that would affect how the the game plays as well. You'd also get uh, also get things get um, what do you call it uh, any skills and morale and things like that as well on top of it. So it's quite uh, quite a nice system for the for the. Uh, for the campaign as well. An hour while explaining the rules and checking the chat. Not a bad pace at all. <laughs> uh, well, you know, it's a, it's a quick quick fire game, isn't it, Ivan? You could probably play a good couple of these of a campaign game in, in an evening, really. I think probably the, the longest part will be setting up a board. And I mean, I kind of went to town on this one. I just put a lot of stuff out, but you wouldn't have to do this much, really. Just... Uh, you know, even pieces of the paper just put down on a, on a dining room table would be enough uh, to play the game out. So, well, I think really I just, there's not much else I can really say about that. I, mean, I hope everybody's enjoyed it. And I've had quite a lot of you people watching this, so that was really nice. Thanks for that and all the, all the likes as well. Uh, more time spent on the train does make it more for community. Uh, cheers, Ivan. Thank you very much. Uh, I have spent about 30 years in gathering lots of this terrain together. <laughs> it does take a while. 
But I like him because he's nice, he's compact. And as I say, you know, I could easily sit down and play a couple of games of this with a, with some mates in an evening. And uh, I, I think, uh, cheers, John. I think at some point in the future, I probably will play more games as well. Uh, like I said, I'll have to have a think about what games to play. But uh, I'm sure there's plenty of stuff we can play uh, live. Even more games of this. And if I get a uh, five-minute Kursk as well. Uh, and try that out. Uh, the thing, I mean, what I like about this is that it is a lower level than stuff like Chain of Command, which I'm more used to. I mean, that's a little bit more um, uh, Trench Storm. <laughs> it's pretty good. Uh, well, I have uh, I've had Trench Hammer. Uh, yes, <laughs> I've got Trench Hammer. That, that's a good idea, actually. I could quite easily set a game of Trench Hammer up, and that's another great, fun game. Uh we played that quite a few times, but not played it for a couple of years. So I might do a trench hammer game, actually. Very good idea. But yeah, well, I hope you've all enjoyed watching that. Uh, hour passed pretty quickly. Uh, I enjoyed it. And uh, as I say, I hope you liked it as well. Uh, do look out for more live videos because there will be more coming. Uh, thanks for all the likes. Uh, got it all the way up to 28. Brilliant. Fantastic. Cheers, Paul. Thank you very much. Uh, I will probably do a proper video at some point on... Uh, on, on this as well anyway uh, maybe a review or something uh, put that out and some more games of it because I've really enjoyed that right well I'm going to sign off and uh, I've got a 28 likes yeah absolutely fantastic uh, the one thing you didn't see I'll just show you before you uh, before we wrap up here uh, we were joined by a, a German a German cat as well I don't know if you can see her there on the asleep on the on the on the chair here there she is so at least at least we didn't have any uh any any tanks on there but we did at least have a german cat <laughs> right cheers chaps uh thanks a million for watching and uh i'll see we'll see you uh see you on the next one